He's Buck Perry from Hickory, North Carolina. And he's about to try his luck in a lake he's fishing for the first time. Back in the days before depth finders hit the angling scene, fishing was part tradition, part misconception, part theory, and part luck, and usually required a whole lot of time and effort to get on fish and make them bite. Today, a dazzling array of angling electronics cut the search time from hours to minutes, allowing you to spend less time hunting for fish and more time fishing for them. On-screen lake maps reveal potential spots and structures. A wealth of high-tech functions display not just depth, but cover, bottom content, and fish position below, to the sides of, and all around the boat. Electric motors steer the boat along programmed courses and hold the boat in place in wind or current. At the touch of a button, electronic anchors lock your boat in perfect position to catch fish. Today's wealth of electronic innovation and real-time information dazzles some, dazes others, and helps the rest achieve amazing results. Because once you learn to interpret what your electronics tell you, well, it's almost like the fish don't have a chance. <laughs> That's a big boy there. Yeah. That's one big bass. We're up in the North Country. We don't have Floridas here. These are Northern Naturals. And she's ranking right up there with Queen of the Pond, I'll tell you that much. Hey, Jim and I just came back from Orlando. We were at a sport fishing industry show called ICAST. It's on every July. And all of the major manufacturers are there and they show, show all their new products that they're introducing in fall and in the, the beginning of the fishing season. And it was amazing to us to see the newest things, rod reels, lures, line, electronics, particularly electronics. Man, we come a long way, babies, from what we had as, as far back as just a few years ago. Yeah, realistically, when you look at electronics today, it's amazing because three years ago, I have a number of different things on this boat and different features with these units that I never used. They didn't exist, and now I use them all the time. Right. And what we're gonna share with you is a little bit of insight on the usage of electronics today, and I guarantee you it'll apply to your fishing, no matter what species of fish you fish for. Let's do a little check, see out on some of these rock humps first yeah. off. Today we're going to start out on some deep rock spots. These are one of my favorite places to catch big bass. A lot of different techniques work on these areas. Carolina rigs, roller jigs, even crankbaits. There are a few things that you should know about these locations. First off, if you find a good deep rock spot, it'll produce year after year. So it's worth your time to do a lot of side imaging to find these types of hard bottom areas. Secondly, these spots can be hot or cold. You can easily pull up and catch a fish on every cast or catch absolutely nothing. Leave for three hours, come back, and the fish will be all over it. That's just how they are. Today it was cold, so we decided to move shallow to see if the big fish were up in the cover. Got him. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Boy, look at that guy. <laughs> oh, Jim! Good fish. There you go. Not a monster, but not a bad one. Pretty nice one. Closed captioning provided by iGogs Quality Eyewear. Not a monster, but not a bad one. Pretty nice one. Came off with a piece of wood. You know, you're tailing down like he just did. You're tailing down on these pieces of cover that have a lot of wood like this. And when you hook a fish like this, baby, you know, you'd be amazed. That's one of the beauties of that tailing. I mean, it is so fast, fast. Jimmy will show you the new gadget to add to this thing. But I mean, you can put on a spot like this and catch three, four, five bass out of one piece of wood. The newest pieces of electronics or more recent years has been this uh, talon or shallow water anchoring system. One thing that uh, professional bass anglers do, they fish a, a lot of times they'll fish with two of them on the back of the boat and you'd ask yourself why? Well this is the reason why. What they can do is they're moving through and really trying to accurately pinpoint 
accurate casts and what they can do with two of them, they can lock the boat in a given position around the cover. Here, get them up. Lift that little porker in. Whoa. Man, man, there's a lot of fish really tight. The water that we're on uh, is really, really dark water. And, uh, oh, man, there you go. Chunk, look how fat that little sucker is, huh? You know, so you gotta get gear up. You can see we're in heavy, heavy cover and a lot of these fish will go real, real, real shallow. Yeah, you know, we're loaded up pretty good with this stuff. He took my trailer off. I'm throwing a Terminator jig, 20 pound test suffix fluorocarbon on a seven foot medium heavy, you know, smoke combination rod and reel, which I use a lot for this. We're kind of tight. This worked really good for us in this kind of condition that we're fishing here right now today, shallow like this. But yeah, you know, heavy line work in these areas. The darker the water is like we're on now, you got to spend a little time picking that cover apart. Yeah, you know, that, that strike zone really sh shrinks down. But any piece of cover, a big boulder, a piece of wood here, a pocket in the weeds, you just go boom, 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 and you catch a fish here, you catch a fish there. Well, what have we learned so far? Jim and I haven't been on this lake this year. We started on some deep rock spots and didn't do any good, so we moved shallow, flipped a lot of shoreline cover, and caught a lot of fish, but no real size. We know the fish got to be going somewhere. It's kind of like hide and seek. Lucky for us, we got some pretty cool tools to look for. We're gonna move to another lake and try fishing the deep weed edges. The big fish might already be set up on that lake. Got him. Down there deep. A little bit better one there. Yeah, a little bit better. Woo! Well, you had a lot of wind go, going here, out here. We came out of the wow. backwater areas, you know, to get out in this main lake stuff where these big gals start to live. We had a lot of fish up shallow, but now we're going to start working some of the deep water stuff. And that's going to pop some good ones, I think. Got him, Jim. Got him? Yeah. Small guy. Man, did he take off. I thought it was a bigger fish. Boy, was he aggressive. He really pounded that thing. It's a good lake. They're really good, healthy fish, boy. Real fertile. You got yours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Right on it. Little bit. Yours is a little better. Yeah. Come here. Oh, come here. There Another big fish, man. Yeah, I know. Look at that guy there. It's a good one there. <laughs> These fish are starting to look a lot be better. They also get off yeah, the they're looking in good. They're in good shape, boy. That was a real oh, leaper. big fish. Whoa. Woo! <laughs> right on the end, James. I mean, they're, you, you can't. They're hitting so weird. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're just tapping at that thing. But this one tapped just a. Come here, big bay, big girl. This one tapped just a little further than she should have. What a good looking fish. Now these fish are just getting out on these ledges. The bluegills are starting to get out here. They finished spawning. Their temperatures, mid 70s. As Soon as those bluegills start getting off those beds and start coming out on these deep, deep water edges, rocks and deep weeds, the biggest fish in the lake on a lot of these small lakes like we fish are just sniffing. Ooh, there's a good one out. Looking Whoa. for them. Ooh. Just sniffing after them. There you go. Whoa, now you're talking. Boy, that was a good one there. Whoa. That's a good place Whoa. to be. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> Pretty heavy line. One thing nice to get in wind like these conditions right now, I got uh, like 17 pound test castable fluorocarbon, suffix fluorocarbon, and it just, telegraphs the bite to you. You get in bigger wind conditions and you're bouncing that bait through the through that dense cover. Boy, that's a beautiful fish. Look at the size of that guy there. This is a tanker. What do you think about him, Al? 
beautiful fish, no question about it. You know, we were talking about electronics. It probably one of the biggest pieces of electronics on the boat, and it's for boat control, is that right there. It's a, your trolling motor. In today's day and age, uh, they keep on bringing new ones to market that do different things. For bass anglers and uh, the type of fishing I do, I prefer a cable drive foot control. It just enables me to, I do a lot of really accurate casting around a lot of cover, and that's where these cable drives really work well, but there's a lot of other really interesting trolling motors on the market that do fabulous things. Anglers who do a lot of trolling for walleyes or stripers often prefer electric steer motors like Minn Kota's Taroba, which allows to steer the motor from anywhere in the boat using an electric foot pedal or a battery-powered remote. This allows hands-free operation while tending trolling rods, retying knots, fighting or netting fish. Tarova also interfaced with Hummingbird Electronics, allowing the use of several iPilot self-steering functions based on GPS navigation. Look at that. It's like a chauffeur for your boat. For example, you can set a course by compass heading or GPS. Use the record attract feature to follow a pre-programmed course of GPS coordinates. Activate the follow contour feature to trace depth contours found on a Lake Master on-screen lake maps. And engage the spot lock feature, which holds your boat in place like an electronic anchor. A lot of musking anglers like to use these features when casting big baits, allowing the boat to self-steer while they're casting lures to prominent boulders, weed clumps, and other key features that hold big fish. That was, whoa, a butt kicking. The latest advancement in self-steer motors is Minn Kota's Altera, which not only does the previous navigation wizardry, but also self-deploys and stows with the touch of a button. There's no more heavy lifting. Whoa, Pike. Whoa. It's I a got bash. a real man He's a big here. boy. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I got one of them real gals here. I like that. Whoa. Whoa. You definitely know the difference when you sit on one of them. Look at that baby. Boy, that's a big one. That is a big one. Come here, mama. What do you see the size of this, this pig? Well, <laughs> hold still. Whoa. How's that? <laughs> that's a big boy there. Yeah. That's one big bass. We're up in the north country. We don't have Floridas here. These are northern naturals. And she's ranking right up there with queen of the pond, I'll tell you that much. You know, as we were saying, you know, mapping is so critical. You know, we're in a lake right here. It's really got massive, uh, big shallow flats and there's no depth changes. But what that number 19 signifies, is there's a small isolated cabbage patch right in this particular area. And that's where these big bass are sitting. That's one thing with mapping units today and the ability to make waypoints, that coordinates, it's latitude and longitude, the ability to come back. You know, right now we're really relatively close to shore, but you get in offshore situations, big massive lakes, the ability to get right back to a really specific spot, that is just probably one of the biggest things in electronics technology today. That is it. And there's no question about it. They're just for finding fish and then for refinding fish. You know, Jim's got three uh, birds on his boat. He's got one 800 series, he's got two 1100 series. On my big boat, um, I've got a, oh, you got him? Yep. Another big fish? Yeah. Oh boy, there's a bull. Oh, no. oh man, whoa. There you go. I like that. At shallow water, we were catching smaller fish. You get out in these deeper areas, it seems like you've got a little bit better caliber of fish, Al. Look at that guy there, perfect, the hook came out. You know, on Jim's boat, he's got, oh. got an 800 series hummingbird and two 1100s. Now, I know some of you can say, yeah, you, you know, so that's great if you can have all of that stuff on your boat, but I can't afford all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm an everyday average angler. I love the fish, but I gotta watch my pennies. Well, the beauty today in some of this stuff is the cost, particularly on the electronics, for a very reasonable price. You could get units today that have side imaging, down imaging, mapping, 
sonar, which is really the four most important things you need, and that'll put you on fish anytime, anywhere. And uh, then you could build from there. Those of us that make a living in a fishing business or we fish tournaments, we have to have all these toys. We're showing you uh, what things are available. But in electronics, depth finders in particular, there's so, many, so much value today, it's incredible. Take the time, shop around, and see what is available. You could get into a unit at a very reasonable price. No matter what species you fish for, two primary features are most important sonar and on-screen mapping. Bait ought about to be in them right now. Oh, there we go. Oh. These allow you to cover water quickly to eliminate unproductive structures and Oops, zero in goes. on areas that yep. hold fish. Ease them up, that could be a crop. Look at him, look at him, he bit on the very, very last. Beauty, put her back. Sonar lets you look beneath the boat tells you how deep the water is, interpret bottom content and cover, and see fish. On-screen mapping provides instantaneous orientation to your position on the lake and to the locations of potential fishing areas. By simply viewing your screen, you can drive directly to prominent points, humps, corners, drop-offs, or structural irregularities that attract fish. It's a huge advantage for quickly locating good spots. There's another, oh, Mr. Fisher. Here we Come go. You, you don't even let your buddy get in oh, there. Oh, he's got a, another whopper stopper on there. Beyond these primary functions, you can also purchase units that have down or side imaging, which resemble photographic images of what lies beneath or to the sides of the boat. Some anglers believe they provide more realistic images, particularly when fish are in cover. A few high-end units even allow 360-degree imaging, sweeping transducer signals around the boat to reveal your surroundings in all directions. It's an amazing technology. And now you can even get touchscreen units that simultaneously display four different functions, bringing all aspects of information to bear at a glance. Obviously, the larger the screen, the more features included, the more spendier the units tend to become. As always, determine what blend of features might work best for your fishing, then select a unit you can afford with a few bucks left over for gas, it. tackle, and other important gear. I love doing this. Absolutely love it. And that's why win, no win, it doesn't make no difference. You get out on these deep weed beds, some of the best fish in there. We caught a lot of fish when we were shallow, you, you know, but we weren't getting the size. That's where them big gals live in these natural lakes. I still see some cabbage going out this way, Jim. Oh, yeah, just boom. Oh, I like that one right there. I got that one, a good one. Oh, a nicer one. Did you miss yours? Yeah. Another good school. They're sitting right on that end of that thing, Jim. You know, we caught just, oh, got your, he's missed another one. Fish after fish after fish. You know, we had a lot of fish shallow. We had a lot of fish deep. I'm looking at some weather. I see some rain coming in on us. Kind of looking ugly. We're fringing it a little bit. But we caught fish all day long, doing a lot of different things. But one of the keys to the success, to our success, no question about it, it was using our electronics, whether it was talons, your mapping system, your depth finders, your trolling motors, using them to the max to fine tune everything you're doing for any kind of cover we're fishing. In and out of wind, it didn't make a difference. If you use all the tools of the trade available to you today, you're going to catch more and bigger fish. And believe me, we got a lot of toys to play with these days. You know, over the years, I had an opportunity to go to a lot of churches all over this great nation of ours and talk about fishing in my faith. A lot of them are game feeds, which I really enjoy doing in a lot of different places. Wild game feeds or fish feeds are really a fun church event, <laughs> event that I, I look, yeah, I'll do this one. And uh, a question that I often get asked, and I get back on letters and emails on this, initially I found kind of strange, but I heard it enough that I wanted to share it with you. Some guy will come up to me, it's usually a guy, not a gal. Usually a guy says, you know, I go to church 
every once in a while, generally to make my wife happy. Yeah, 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 you know, the fish aren't biting. There's a cold front coming through. There's not a tournament this weekend. So to placate everybody at home, yeah, I'll go to church. But Al, yeah, you know, I really don't get anything out of it, man. Yet I feel like there's something missing in my life, but I can't get hooked up. I can't get plugged into it. Well, the answer that I've shared with these guys, and you'd be surprised how many questions similar to this I've had. Well, maybe God doesn't want you at the church you happen to be at. Tough statement, isn't it? And, and when you're in a fellowship that God wants you at, you're gonna know it. You're gonna receive from that pulpit. It's gonna talk to your heart. You're gonna wanna make changes. You're gonna hear things that you're gonna think about all that week. It's gonna be a good thing. It's gonna be uplifting. It's gonna be encouraging because that's what the Word of God is all about. And uh, uh, you'll know when you're where God wants you to be. You're gonna be excited to go to church. You're gonna wanna go to church and you're gonna hear and you're gonna receive. And that is a truism. I know many, 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 many people that for periods of their life have spent time in one particular fellowship and really never got much out of it. It had a massive impact on them. Today they're happy, they're joyful, they're free, they're into God's Word, they're growing like crazy, they're doing things that impact the world in a positive way. I'm just saying it's possible that you need to go do a little church shopping. And when it's right for you, you will know it. From all of us here at The Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season, and we'll see you on the water. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.